So let's ask ourselves, what is an eye diagram in a digital communication system? And here's our digital communication system uh, with a transmit filter to make the pulse shape, a channel, the noise at the receiver amplifier, and a receiver filter. And for more information on this, check out the pulse shaping video on the channel linked at the end of this video. Uh, let's start by considering the channel as a flat fading channel, which means it's, uh, it's uh, a constant in the frequency domain. Uh, and let's not consider noise. We'll just consider the transmit filter and the receive filter. And we'll start with considering a square pulse, uh, which means that the filter is matched uh, as a square and the convolution of these two is a triangle. So if you, which is the signal that will be here that you'll be sampling. So for a square input pulse, the sampled signal here is a triangle. Again, uh, check out that other video if you want more information on that. And let's plot it here for this data sequence. So if you're sending a one, you get a positive triangle. So another one in this particular data sequence example. When you send a zero, we're going to consider antipodal signaling, so a negative triangle for the, for the zero. And then in this example, we're plotting with a, a positive one, followed by another positive one, uh, followed by a zero. Okay. So this is a data sequence we're going to consider. Now let's look at what is the overall signal coming out here if we sent this. This is each component. It's linear, so they add. So the signal coming out here will be a signal that goes constant across there because as the first signal is decaying, the second signal is increasing. Then it'll go linearly down from here because as this one's decreasing, this one's decreasing as well. And you can see that where this is zero, this is one. So it goes back up to there in this sequence across there again, back down to there. So the blue curve is what you will actually see at the receiver here. And if you sample it exactly at the sample times, then from the blue curve, you will recover the one, one, negative one, 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 because there's no component from the others. Now, what's the eye diagram? Well, let's plot this uh, in a recurring way. So uh, we're going to plot it now across here. So for example, this is the waveform here. We're just exactly plotting the blue waveform. It then goes down, but now we're going to wrap it back to the start. So now it goes up, we're wrapping it here, up, and then across, and then we're wrapping it. So we're going to wrap it every three samples. And so the wrapping goes down, and then you can see if we carried on with more data, we would be continuing to wrap and we would see all these possibilities. This is all the possibilities. And this is what's called the eye diagram because this in the middle looks like an eye. So let's try and see why it looks like an eye a bit more detail and start by acknowledging that the square waveform is not a great waveform uh, as was described in that other video because it requires infinite energy. So we use a shaped pulse and we talked about one there which was the Gaussian pulse. So let's draw this for the Gaussian pulse. And this is what it looks like. So what does the overall pulse shape look like here? Well, the overall pulse shape is going to be something which goes more smoothly between these points. Okay, so this is what the result of the Gaussian pulse shape is going to look like for the, the sequence that we had before. So that means in our eye diagram, I'm just going to draw it over here, in our eye diagram, we're going to have more smooth shapes between these points. Uh, this is how the eye diagram is going to look. Of course, these like this. So it becomes, it's not like this, which it was for square, but now it's smoothed out. It starts to look more like an eye. So let's ask ourselves, what do we have to take care of and what can we use the eye diagram for? Well, one thing is we have to take care of the sampling. So if the sampling rate at the transmitter is not the same as the sampling rate at the receiver, because they're geographically separate, one's at the transmitter, one's at the receiver. Uh, if we haven't got the timing correct, then what's going to happen to our eye diagram? So let's think about that and let's try and draw that here. Well, if the receiver timing is a little bit faster, then it's going to be sampling at a sh before it should, so to the left and increasingly so uh, because this is going to be a constant distance here, a constant time difference at the receiver and there's a constant time difference at the transmitter and if they're not matched up uh, like this one they're going to be this is going to be a little bit before this is going to be a bit more before this timing will be even more before and you should be able to hopefully you can see then like let's take this one here for example this sampling time here so instead of sampling there which you should sample right down so at that time it would be 
here right at the bottom. Instead of that, you're going to be sampling before that, which means you've got to the curve before it's got to the bottom. And that means that on, this, on the wrapping diagram, it happens a little bit to the right because you're sampling earlier than the bottom, a bit before. And so what this means is all of these curves, if the timing is wrong, all of these curves are going to be continually shifting to the right from all the different possible combinations uh, as you're going through uh, with the eye diagram. They're all going to be shifting to the right. And pretty quickly, as you can see here, pretty quickly, you don't have this nice gap anymore between sampling, this is your sampling time in the middle, uh, you don't have this nice gap anymore between the positive and the negative. And what is described there is the, it's what we say is the eye has closed. So you can use this in practice by adjusting the timing the clock at the receiver, looking at the signal there in a wrapped eye diagram. And for as you tune the timing, you will start to see the eye opening. It'll look like this until you've got the timing right, and then the eye will open. So that's one of the uses of the eye diagram. So that's timing. Another thing is, of course, noise. So let's just consider noise. If we look at our system back up here, uh, we're going to introduce this noise. So far, we haven't considered it. Let's consider it. So let's draw the diagram. Let's assume we've got the timing correct. And now what's the effect of the noise? Well, the effect of the noise is that you're not going to have these nice waveforms every single time. The noise is going to disrupt the waveform. The timing will still be correct, but the noise means the waveform is going to come through slightly differently, each time slightly differently. Maybe not as big, uh, maybe uh, a bit of jitter on, on, the, on the waveform. And so what the effect is, as you can see here, uh, is we do all the different combinations. Uh, the, the, they don't line up over each other perfectly. And the effect is that this distance here becomes less. And when you do your sampling at the sampling time, sometimes you'll be sampling down low and clearly negative. Sometimes it'll be less negative and same at the positive side. And if the noise is too big, then this can be closing over as well. So this is another reason why the eye might close over, close over is if the noise is too high. So one is timing, one is noise. And let's look at the third main concern, and that's when you have a channel. So here we've assumed a flat fading channel, which means an impulse, which means impulse response, which means you, it doesn't affect these waveforms. But now let's look at a channel and let's consider a basic intersymbol interference channel. And for more information on that, there's a video on intersymbol interference on the channel linked at the end of the video. So let's look at intersymbol interference. Now let's assume the case where three quarters of your signal comes through on the main path, maybe a two path fading model in a wireless communication system. So let's say three quarters of your, system, your signal has come through on the main path, but there's a quarter of your signal now. So this is the main path, but let's say a quarter of your signal energy is on a secondary path, which has had a different path delay, and it's coming through, let's say simplified, but let's say one time slot later. So here I've drawn, this is the effect of the digital one you'll get three quarters, not all the way up to the top, but three quarters of the way up on the first path. And then there's a reflected path, maybe off a wall, which comes at one time slot delay. This is called intersymbol interference, and it's coming with a quarter of the energy. So what happens, let me draw this for the next one. This is what's going to happen for the one, but the intersymbol interference coming out a quarter. Then we've got the zero, which is three quarters, but another quarter coming at the next time slot, followed by our one. Uh, followed by the intersymbol interference uh, with another one here, followed by the intersymbol interference for the one. Okay, it's a bit more complicated. What happens to the blue curve now? It, we had this, this is exactly the same data sequences over here, but now what are we going to get out? Well, now we're getting here. The, this has got zero. What, what happens at these timings? Well, there's zero component there, a quarter there, and three quarters here. So that's where the signal is. It's up at one. The next time slot, it's minus three quarters, but plus one quarter, which is the intersymbol interference carried over from before. So now, oops, sorry, now that line goes down to a half. Okay, and what happens here? It's the same three quarters up and a quarter down, so that goes to a half. Then it's three quarters plus a quarter. This one goes up to one. And then at the next time slot, it depends what, so let's draw the, the, uh, the, the negative for the zero here. 
and this goes three quarters down, followed by another quarter for intersignal interference. So this is going back to the, the halfway point here. Okay, so now we can see it's not just simply between plus one and minus one, it's now between plus one, one, minus one, sorry, plus one, a half, minus a half, and minus one. And so now the, in the, the diagram is going to be like this, where there's values here as well. So now there's going to be possible values. So here, if we plot this one, this one goes from here down to this point here. That's what's happened there. Then it's gone up to that point there, which is the one. Then it's gone, if we wrap it around, it's gone from there up to there. And then it's gone from there down to this point here. And we see all of these possibilities are possible when we have our random data sequence. Uh, and so if I fill this in here, um, we have these possible values uh, of transition. Uh, and I think hopefully I'm going to get them all here. Um, which ones am I missing? This one here, and this one here, and this one here. Uh, and here. Okay, so these are all the different transitions that you can now have uh, in the intersymbol interference channel. And now you can see the eye has closed over because of intersymbol interference. So there's timing, there's noise, and there's intersymbol interference, all of which close the eye in the eye diagram. And by tuning these parameters, you would now need to tune this filter to put in an equalizer to equalize the intersymbol interference from this channel. You can tune the equalizer, you can tune the timing, and you can choose the noise suppression on your in your receiver, and all of these things can you use to open the eye and to mean that when you do make that detection here, you're clearly able to distinguish it from a plus one or a minus one. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and like the video. It helps others to find the video. And there's a web page with a categorized list of all the videos, uh, including downloadable PDF files of these worksheets. So check that out.